Yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night AEW Dynamite review. The show didn't make me want to rip my head off. I can say that. It wasn't like the worst Dynamite, but it just. A lot of boring shit, though. And shit I didn't give a fuck about. I don't know, it's just your typical dynamite, I guess. I, I don't know if there anything really much to really say. Like, you know what I mean? It's not me trying to be hating on it. It's not even me trying to freaking find things to even like about it. I'm not trying to force myself to like something. Something should be naturally good about the show. There was actually something that was naturally good about the show, which I will talk about it. So, let's talk about it there. Grab your Coca-Cola. And whatever the fuck you want to drink, drink it magnificently there as I do always. And yeah. Oh shit, oh shit, cheers. It's good stuff, make me want to fuck bitches, be black couch, make them go. Oh shit, oh shit, I'm telling you, a Coca Cola in a stylish glass like this one, this beautiful glass, and you gotta check it's, it's, it's as magnificent as you can. Alright, it's good fall. That's good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. But this show, in the end of the day, was not good stuff. So. Let's talk about it. So in a way, this will be a two for one. Not really a two for one, because we're also going to talk about the biggest news that happened today about Dean Ambrose, a.k.a. John Moxley. So let's talk about it, all right? Uh, I mean, I guess they're trying to build up the stupid pay-per-view they have, but if you can really be honest, like they, they probably it's like a poor attempt, you know what I mean? And I understand, like, Things doesn't go as planned, but this guy was supposed to have a match at the pay-per-view. Maybe he could have, like, done whatever after. I understand shit happens, but, like, we'll talk about it, right? Alright, so show started with Kenny Omega in the first match defeating some jobber named Alan Angel. Who the fuck is he? They had a competitive match. If, if really Kenny Omega wants to, like, wouldn't it make sense if this was even, like, a squash match? Why was it fucking some competitive match with a jobber that no one fucking knows or gives a fuck about? This is not like Kenny Omega is facing... Like, God, like... It's not like Kenny Omega is facing some guy who's a mid-carder and shit. This is a guy that literally no one fucking knows or cares about. What, is he from the Dark Order? No one fucking knows or cares. After the match, Kenny Omega gets a steel chair. He basically says, you know, uh, Some guy was... Some guy, Nakazawa. Oh yeah, you know, uh, that's a little taste, uh, you know, a little taste that I'm going to get my ass right there, frickin' like, full gear. I'm going to be full in gear with, uh, for some gay action there. Give me a steel chair! And that's how he sounded like, you know what I mean there? And then frick, he was going to do the one-winged angel, but then Hangman Page came out. And he attacked a guy. It was badly, it was like badly camera, camera, but whatever. And then he was going to do his stupid clothesline, but then Kenny escaped. He has the title, it says... Hold it tight for 10 days because it'll be his, blah, blah, blah. I honestly think, don't think this is, like... People, people, this is... Guys, this is... This is long-term storytelling. Because it's happening a year, the same pay-per-view as last year. Motherfuckers, they were going to do it this night all out, apparently. And H Hangman Page decided to take a break for some reason. Okay? This is, and really, they didn't even, it's not like they feuded. You want to think about long-term storytelling, look at feuds like Sting versus Hulk Hogan. They literally interacted for like one year, okay, and then led to their match at Starcade. Heck, even fucking Daniel Bryan versus Triple H recently, okay? That's like, if it's, like, sadly, that's like the one of the only examples of long-term storytelling, okay? Or long-term booking, as they say. Wrestling, like, if you guys pretend, like, because, again, this is literally happening as condensential, as you would say. Because they weren't going to do this match of full gear, you retards, okay? And plus, it's not even a fucking, really, Hangman Page or a future world champion. He's only going to be the future world champion because if he ever wins, because I won't be surprised if Kenny wins. The only reason why he'll win is because he's, like, friends with them. Like, he's friends with the fucking people... And the Young Bucks, the fucking... Because they're, like, the people who are showcased, you know? 
And again, why isn't this like the main event? Why isn't this the main fucking match? Shit, like yeah, this is this is the world title feud, and this is not even just a wrestling. This is not even just an AEW thing. This is a WWE. Why are the fucking world champions not in the main event? I don't know. They're barely on. Even though this past Monday, yeah, Big E was in the main event, but if you really think about it, they're barely showcased as the main role. You know what I mean? Malachi Black says he is banned from ringside from Cody versus Andrade, doesn't and doesn't make a difference in the long run. Malachi points out that he assassinated that they assassinated they assassinated Julius Caesar. It wasn't just Marcus that betrayed him. I don't know what this is supposed to mean. Or just like I don't know. I I just think this is just whatever. Unless it's some guy, y'all, apparently Cody Rhodes' fucking group is gonna turn heel. Like, who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? Oh, see, wait, wait, he's gonna do like some wife family thing. Like, oh, hey, I'm gonna turn you heel. You're gonna, uh, he turned face now. He turned heel, man. Like, what? what it makes no sense. CM Punk comes out and says there are two people who aren't here, and then the fans were chanting John Moxley, and then he mentioned John Moxley, aka Dean Ambrose. He said he's proud of Moxley. For not trying to be like a tough guy. And says that he's the toughest man to try to go into rebound. Basically saying that. And yeah. I mean. It's not. I'm not going to hate on this. Because it, it is something. I guess like. You know. It's whatever. It just. It, again. This just happened right. This just happened. My worry is that they're going to turn this to some story shit. You know what I mean? That's what they seem they're going to... They're, like, doing... Because they were talking about this through an entire night. And you know what I mean? I mean, I guess, sure, it's one thing. And I wouldn't mind... I mean, here's the thing. I'm all for, you know, turning real life into storylines. Maybe, who knows? This would have made sense. And he pointed out, CM Punk pointed out, Oh, I could have been... I could have been in the World Title Limited Tournament. But you gotta blame Eddie Kinks. Really? Wouldn't it make sense, baby? You take, you actually, for, instead of doing some stupid match that no one fucking cares about, who the fuck wants to see CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston besides weird fucking smarks? Wouldn't it make sense, really, for your supposed, like, big shows, you know, your pay-per-views? Wouldn't it make sense, even, like, to help your viewership, even, like, for God's sake, to make people fucking care about Punk, that he actually joins the tournament, you know, taking Moxie place, and then fucking, you know, CM Punk so magically defeats Brian, leads to him being the world champion, and when Moxley comes back, they have their fucking feud, and maybe fucking Moxley says, you know, you're just using my name for whatever. Like, you know, basically says, like, you don't really care about me and whatever. I don't know. Turned that to a feud. Basically, like, he used it as an excuse to pretend to, I don't know, something. Like, something. You know, this is actually an opportunity here to lead to a... A match for the future. This, like it or not, like this is actually a potential idea for a feud. Like Moxie's out of action. He could fucking like, when he comes back, he goes after the man that took his place. This is actually a chance for a feud, and you didn't do fucking that. Take advantage of it. Like what the fuck? <laughs> like uh, I don't even know. I don't know. Cause if anything, that would make sense. Like fuck. If you want to bring some. If we want to offer some excitement. Yeah, see a punk being in the title picture? That is not a bad idea. You know? And you know, even for the Smarks, Punk versus Brooke and Brian. Heck, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Punk, for, even though there might, might not have been much of a story because it's a tournament match, maybe they could, like, that could lead to a story between them to face again and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, come on here. It's like, think. <laughs> Oh man, come on, you actually have, but instead, let, let's keep Punk facing jobbers, for fuck's sake. I don't know. But it was cool, him talking about John Moxley, I, I'm not gonna hate on that, you know, God bless uh, Dean Ambrose, like, I will talk about my thoughts on that, okay? Uh, Punk then addresses Eddie Kingston, says, oh, you know, if you didn't, uh, if he didn't interrupt me last week, I, you know, I would have chosen the tag team, uh, the, what's the tag team, the fucking ti title tournament crap, whatever they call it. But he says, you know, I'll be waiting for you, Eddie, because, uh, for some reason we have problems and we're going to settle it. Like, what problems? He mentions, like, something from years ago. No one fucking knows what happened years ago. This is fucking AEW, the supposed second biggest brand in wrestling now. Establish what's going on now. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> I don't know. 
But again, who gives a shit? Like, Eddie Kingston, really? That's the big match he can do? And all the Sparks are going to be tended care by Eddie Kingston because, oh, he won the mic, the best mic of the year. Or, for some reason, we're supposed to be tended care about because he says the F word or he curses. And, you know, he's so fucking edgy, man. Even though he's just basically forcing to try to seem like he's cool. And he reality is a fucking weirdo that gets that fails at robbing a bodega. You know what I mean? Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express get some payback on the super clicks. Christian does the two chair the concerto to uh, Adam Cole. I didn't hate that. I didn't hate that. I, I like Christian and I'm glad he did it. But this just means like fucking they're gonna do some shit where the super click comes back and beats them. You know what I mean? So whatever. FTR defeats Samira. De yeah, basically a Callisto apparently is there. Uh, C Callisto, he's like, they, people are saying, oh, Callisto's in AEW, guys. So, Callisto, yeah, this was announced. Something about him and some guy named Ariel Star. They retained the, tri yeah, so basically FTR retained the AAA tag titles. Why is this happening? Like, if this is a AAA match, why isn't this happening in AAA? Oh, but it's Forbidden Door. Shut up. This is literally no different when W... If you remember when WWF did this thing with the fucking NWA and no one fucking cared. If memory serves me right, I believe it was like, what, Bad Blood, I think? In your house, Bad Blood. They were doing that shit with the NWA where they're having fucking title matches of the NWA tag. Like, who the fuck cares? This is W... That's WWF, you know? But whatever. Okay, here's something that was actually pretty cool tonight. So the Inner Circle named the... Uh, American top team opponents they want to face a full gear. They, so it's Eddie, uh, uh, Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, Junior Dan Santos, uh, whoever fuck he is, Andra, uh, Andra, Andre, 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 I don't know. Uh, but then before, uh, before the fifth man was announced, Page Van, Van Zandt tried to get into the match. She was basically saying like, Oh, I can, I think I can beat you. I can beat all five of your asses, or you know, I can take you out five on one. And then fucking Jericho said, "You want to face us five on one, or take, you want to take us five on one?" Basically, in line, in, in, in inciting that freaking, she wants to have like a five on one some. So, yeah, a little sex joke. That's actually kind of funny. You know, it, it's it's cool. It's not too bad. I like Jericho, so it, it actually wasn't. It wasn't too bad. So, good, good, good stuff. God forbid you're actually edgy. Um, and then fucking, then they picked Dan Lambert. So Dan Lambert, the guy who basically talks. Um, yeah. I like Dan Lambert. The guy speaks the fucking truth about gay EW, so. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Jamie Hayter defeats Anna J. For some reason, isn't that, like, God forbid, like, yeah, this is a chick that's been on the show for a year and then she loses. I mean, I'm not complaining. Jamie Hayter chick, uh, like, when she debuted, I was like, no, who the fuck who she is? But then, she's actually pretty, both, I think, mean, God forbid, you got a woman, you got two women who are pretty hot. Yeah, she's actually, what was that her name? Fucking Jamie Hayter? She's actually not too, she's actually not too bad looking. I was kind of, like, but she dyed her hair like she has... Blonde streaks, but now she's like a brune, like you know, black hair. I mean, I, mean, I, I prefer to, like her having blonde hair. She actually looked pretty good. They're both, God forbid, hot chicks wrestling. You know what I mean? It would be nice if you do some hot shit, because for God's sake, you're TV 14. Why not take advantage of that? If you want ratings, have them do some hot shit. But no, let's have them wrestle and pretend to care about women's goddamn wrestling, guys. And I say this is why the, the AW, this is why, because they did a, a longer match than fucking, uh, uh, the Queen of the Ring. Who the fuck cares about women's wrestling? That's the thing. Who the fuck cares? God. Who cares about that shit match from last week about uh, Kyle Shida versus whoever the, the Serena bitch? Who cares? Then, yeah, I believe they were also talking about, oh, they were hyping up a tranny versus... Yeah, you want to see a tranny a fucking wrestling in a fucking women's fucking tournament match with Kyle Shida? For God's sakes, fuck off there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Then after the match, fucking, they attack Anna J more. Then they Conti comes out. She gets overwhelmed. Then Thunder Rosa comes out. Oh, well, I want to see Thunder Rosa versus B Britt Baker too. Why? Why? 
And don't give me this shit that, oh, I'm gonna pretend to care about that Lights Out match from freaking months ago. Whoever, like, don't give me this shit, because who the fuck cares? Oh, oh, a woman was bleeding, wow! Like, really, you wanna see women bleed? You wanna see what, like, come, uh, listen. I'm not hating on the idea of blood, but come on, you wanna see really women in hardcore matches? Like, God forbid, you don't, you don't want the men to fucking have hardcore matches and bleed and shit like that. But you want to see the women, instead of them doing hot shit, who the fuck pretend to care about women's wrestling? Again, they're not made for fucking women's wrestling. They can't handle this shit. And again, it doesn't draw... Who, who the fuck pretend to care about women's goddamn wrestling? I'm sorry, no one's going to pretend to care about it. Besides Smarks. Because, oh, I care about the women. I'm going to pretend to care about them because I, I'm a, you know, I'm going to... So I can get laid and shit. Fuck off. Fucking white knight net bearded mongoloids. And speaking of that, MJ was basically talking about those type of fans. He called them in. He called the AEW fans incels. So that's actually kind of accurate. But the reality is, MJF like, I wouldn't have a problem with MJF though. It's just again sometimes he's boring. I'm not saying that he's like the most terrible thing. I think he has like whatever he's try. He tries some on some things. But the reality is, let, let's be honest here. The guy wears a fucking scarf. That's fucking gay. He's no different than wearing the scarf and, with Jericho wearing the scarf. It makes no fucking sense. It's not cool. Oh, he's calling the uh, the fans whatever. He's calling them virgins. Okay, you motherfucker. You're probably the biggest virgin out there. And not only that. Like, the guy also did gay shit in the indies. So why should I pretend to care about... But knowing that MGF did gay shit in the indies, what makes him better than Darby Allen, who probably does more gayer shit than ever? You know what I mean? MGF says that the AW doesn't work with work without him and Darby Allen. He claims that the top guys for a while... They were the top guys for a while, unlike the other two, other two pillars, because they have... They have it, and the fans know they are, and blah, blah, blah. He says, like, yeah, basically he says the fans, the reason why they boo him is because they basically resemble what Darby, they he, they resemble what they hate about people, or they, oh, because they're, they, yeah, they call him insult, and they, he's acting like they see he's a Chad. Motherfucker, he ain't no fucking Chad, bro. Um... Yeah, basically trying to seem like, oh, you know, I, you know, I get all the chicks and shit, man. You know, I, I, I you, you're, because I reflect everything that you hate about men or whatever. Basically saying that, you know, they're losers, which I'm not saying that he's not wrong, but motherfucker, you did gay shit, bro. What makes you different than these motherfuckers? If anything, a lot of these AEW fans are gay themselves. They fucking enjoy seeing K it, fucking Adam Cole and the Young Bucks kissing. What makes you different? Because you did gay shit in the indies, bro. Whatever, then Sting comes out with a parade of fake Darby. Okay, this was... I, I had no problem with Sting, but this is so retarded. So, fake Darby Allens. They basically ripped off AEW. Uh, like, they, you know the thing is? AEW ripped off Sting. They ripped off fucking multiple Stings coming out, which made no sense, like, months ago. They, they did it for no reason. That a bunch of Stings comes out. They did now Sting and a bunch of Darby Allens when we know the real Darby is coming out. What makes, well, how did this make sense? We know Darby is there. Well, why should fucking MJ worry about a bunch of fake Darbys? What sense does this make? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, actually, did, did I really say that this show wasn't too bad? I'm actually thinking about it. It's really not that. It's really the same AEW. It's still the boringest shit. It's like, it's... I take back what I say. It, looking back, it is really a boring show, okay? Uh, but wrestling's back, guys. Wrestling's back. Right? AEW's my antidepressant. Fuck off. Andrade defeats Cody Rose with some help of FTR for some reason. Then the Lucha Brothers comes out and attack FTR. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I, I took a shit during this match. This match was shit. Okay? Oh yeah, fucking, so Miro, aka Rusev, was the one to replace fucking John Moxley. He had a, I, I would say this is why I liked also about AEW tonight though. Uh, he cut a promise as, you know, God, did you forsaken me? Or did you, is this a, basically like, you know, he's, he's about, he's in a battle with God and faith. He's in battle with God for some reason, which I think that's kind of interesting. It's better than him doing the call, oh, I'm a gamer, a game over. Like, what the fuck is that, Rusev? But, like, 
he's in a battle within himself against God and whatever. And so it's like, you know, if you fail, if I fail, then I won't forgive you, God. <laughs> like he's saying that he's better than God or something, or I don't know. Like if he loses, maybe he becomes an atheist. I don't fucking know. Maybe that that's I, I actually don't mind this. Fucking Rusev's giving dealing with God. That's actually not bad. So I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And then at least in the main event, Miro defeats fucking Orange Cassidy. It was supposed to be Dean Ambrose, but then you know Dean Ambrose, aka John Moxley, is uh, getting rehab now. So good for him. Um. Yeah, but my problem is this match, this match should have been a fucking squash match. There's been so much of a squash match, but then Orange Cassie got some offense. Like, really? And then, like, look, when they, they, they're showing that Orange Cassie, like, he prevailed to be the semifinal or, like, the fucking fin final tournament. Really? Or, like, yeah, the semifinal. Th like, fucking Orange Cassie, he's, like, bruised up, and he went on to defeat two big guys? Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what, like, how the sense of does that make? You know what I mean? But, yeah, in the main event... Oh yeah, so yeah, fucking Rusev wins, and it's in the end it's Daniel Bryan and Miro, or Bryan Daniels or whatever the fuck. They're in the face off. Bryan offers to shake his hand, but then Miro walks off. I mean, it would it would make it would been kind of cool, maybe a super kick to Bryan. I don't fucking know, but eh, that's how they end the show. Overall, again, it was a typical gay AEW shit. It was pretty boring, but it wasn't the worst show I've seen. So, I, I, you know, I will say that. It wasn't completely boring. It wasn't, like, the worst show I've seen. There were some decent things, but it doesn't mean that the show was entirely good. It was pretty boring for most part, though. I like Rusev doing what he's doing. The inner circle stuff was pretty cool. And what else? Um... I don't even know what the, what, the, what did I like. <laughs> if you looking back, there's really not like things I like. Fuck. I'm trying, people. I'm trying to see what I like about gay EW. Okay, I'm for God's sake. I'm not trying to be negative. It's not me trying to hate wrestling. I'm trying to fucking find. That's the thing. Wrestling's so hard to like, but apparently to gay f wrestling fans now, everything is good. It's such a great time to be a wrestling fan. No, it's not. God. Anyway, so that was wrestling. Oh yeah, now, now let's talk about John, John Moxley. So this is a bonus video. Bonus, two for one. So John Moxley, aka Dean Ambrose, is getting fucking rehab. Good for him. I'm not gonna hate the idea. You know, I, like good, good, good stuff. You know, you know, and even CM Punk mentioned, you know, oh, you know, we need sometimes we need help, but we don't because we want to be badass or we, you know, we don't want to be seen as bad. Which I have no problem with. Good for him, you know, alcohol is fucking a bitch, you know. But people saying, like, oh, you know, AEW's, like, well, me, who knows? Uh, the thing is, we don't know. People are turning this to, again to an a, a anti WWE. And a Listen, let's be fucking come to a close and say that both shows suck, okay? Who the fuck cares? And fucking, the, fa the way that wrestling is going, no wonder people would drink alcohol, okay? Because, for God's sake, WWE sucks, but they act like AEW's better, and it's like fucking A. But even when people say, you know, it's AEW's fault for making him drink, if you if you really ask me, this show would make me fucking drink too. Because how garbage both shows are, okay? I don't know, because if you really think about it, look at what, I, if memory serves me right, I think there was like a Hall of Fame, right? It was like 2017, I believe. John Mox, Dean Ambrose like, like was drunk. He was from he was getting interviewed. He was drunk. So what does that tell you? Is it really AEW's fault? And this is me not even like this is not me even hating AEW. This is me actually sort of the sort of defending the idea that people from WWE or people who are fans of WWE like saying that oh it's AEW's fault. If you really think about it, again maybe fucking Dean Ambrose always had a drinking problem. So, what, what is, like, why are we turning this to a WWE versus AEW thing? Okay? Because, let's be, like, it, like cause if you really think about it, both companies are fucked. You know? And maybe it's a problem, like, within John Moxie himself. He always had this problem with him drinking and shit. So, why are we turning this, like, oh, it's WWE's fault or, or it's AEW's fault? The reality is, it's his own battle and good for him for, I don't know, doing shit about it. I don't know. <laughs> like, why are we turning this to a fucking war? Like, come on here. I don't know, that's just my thoughts. I mean, just the fans that do, like, don't get me wrong. AEW, we can't make people fucking drink because this fucking shit company itself. You know what I mean? 
but they act like fucking WWE didn't do, didn't do fuck all, or it's like it's Sean, or it's like, come on, it's fucking retarded. If anything, again, both companies suck. Okay, if that's the case, also how like they don't have a, they don't stop people from drinking. Look what happened to Jay Uso. Was it Jay or Jimmy Uso in WWE? You know what I mean? So does that do they really help stop their wrestlers? I mean, sure, that could have been his own fault. That's why he also I don't know, but I, I don't know. Just in the end of the day, let's not turn this up fucking who who is better shit because this is retarded. Let's come in fucking. Let's literally come to the fucking fruition that both companies suck, okay? And God bless fucking Ambrose. Hopefully he gets the help he needs. Cause they act like fucking, oh, you know WWE man, and they they started or AEW, you know they made the problem even worse. Maybe he always had a drinking problem, you motherfuckers. God damn it! I just think he's retarded. But like, I do hope like they're not turning this to some storyline crap because it's just freaking like. I mean, I wouldn't mind. What am I saying? I wouldn't mind. It's just like fucking. I don't know. It's either too soon or whatever. They're trying to. They're they're trying to make themselves feel seem good. Like, oh, you know, John Moxley. You know, we we are proud of him. We are proud of him to go to the. You could just say like, you know, oh, okay, he's gone. You, you didn't need to say, you know, to turn this to say like we're proud of him and blah blah blah. I mean, turning this to a story like where he has to go to rehab. That's not a problem. But like, to st spend the entire night saying we're proud of him, guys. We're proud of him. He should go. We're proud of him. Every fucking single. That's a problem, you know, because you're doing. You're trying to make it seem like you know good or whatever. But whatever. I mean, if it, isn't this like that's like no different when fucking. I, if it, if you look what happened with TNA when Kurt Angle had this issue, they didn't even do it that much. But AEW turned up to eleven. Whatever there. Um, so that's my thoughts of the whole John Moxley shit. Overall, Dynamite was pretty boring, but it's whatever. It is what it is. I don't know. Rusev's not gonna fucking win, isn't he? Because they're just gonna have Brian win. But if it, whatever. It is what it is, people. That's my fucking review. That's every. Uh, take care, everybody. Uh, you see, I don't have to have that problem because my addiction, my drink, my kind of drink is a good old Coca Cola. It prevents fuck you getting fucking wasted. Having problems in your life. Um, and also, it prevents you from uh, having to go to rehab. Because this is alcohol free, motherfuckers. I'm, that's why I'm cool. That's why I'm better. I'm good. I'm, f I'm fine like fine wine, people. I'm fine as this good drink, people. And that's why I can also fuck some chicks with consensual shit. That's why they don't need to fucking complain to say, like, oh, I drugged the bitch or fuck, I gave her alcohol. You know what I mean, people? Cheers. Alright, people. Don't like sign peace, yeah, bye. Stay away from drugs and alcohol, my friends.